so approval testing is a, a great technique when your code is not very well structured, but you would like to get some tests in place so that you can refactor it. And you've got a video that about introducing approval testing where you show this process. Yeah. And it's a, a good way to get in, get some tests in that are fast enough that you can start getting some confidence to refactor. Yes. So could, could you so could you explain it for people that haven't seen my video? Or <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. So you you try and take um, a piece of code that that mm -hmm. kind of hangs together. Um, it, it may not be the usual kind of small unit you do have in a classic unit test, but uh, something that you can isolate without using too many mocks. Um, so uh, yeah, so maybe a function that does a few more things than a standard unit test. Mm -hmm. maybe it's, and if it's going to produce some form of text, then that's a bonus. So like if it's generating XML or something like that, then it's uh, you, you basically try and get it to produce an output that if it's not text, you can convert it to text. Yeah. Uh, so that you write a, a piece of code that's I would call a printer in that case. So if you output uh, this piece of code manipulating the state of a, a small tree of objects, you'd write a printer that would be able to render the, that, the state of those objects as text in a, in a readable way. Or if it's already producing XML, then start with that. You, know, you start with the XML. Yeah. And you, um, you uh, record that. Um, and you, So the first time you, when you create the test, you run the, the code, you look at the output and say, well, yeah, as far as I can tell, that looks correct. I'll approve that. And you store it in an approved file. And then the next time you run the test, it will just compare against that stored text. Yeah. And if it matches, the test passes. And if it doesn't match, then if you were refactoring, you may have made a mistake. And at yeah. that point, you can um, go and uh, go back and refactor it again without making a mistake. So for, for the... Um, and that's what you, it's a characterization test, characterizing what the thing does. Yeah. Um, the thing that, that uh, approval testing does that's more than characterization testing is it allows you, because you can, you've designed that output in some way so that you can look at it and you've approved it. When you get a failing test where it's not a refactoring mistake, where it's you've added a feature or yeah. you've fixed a bug or, or whatever, you can then look at the diff between what you approved previously and what yeah. you've got now. And you can say, well, I like the new one better. Yeah. I approve that and easily overwrite the approved file with the new. So that's where the name is from. It's uh, it's this because of this explicit step you need to take to read the output and decide to approve it. Yes. And and and, and just to add add to that is, is one of the places where I've seen that you widely used that, that, that's slightly different to what you were describing is for graphical things. Mm. So, so, so Goiko Adzik, for example, has a tool called Appraise that does a, approval testing for graphics and you can kind of click between the, the two. You know, if, you like, if you like the change, you keep it and if you don't, you don't. But, but that idea of validating the output of the system and allowing you to Pick which what which which one wins, you know. It, when a test fails, I, I, I think I think that's a, a a really useful tool to be able to deal with complex systems. And and I think I, I read somewhere that um, uh, you've used this in some quite complicated software. Yes, yes, I have. Um, so uh, I mean, this technique. Um, my my husband. Uh, is a software developer as well. And he invented this tool for, for doing this um, back in like 2003 and open sourced it text to test. And he's been using it ever since. And I've worked with him in several different uh, organizations on using this approach. So he's done it with uh, airline crew optimization uh, software. That's where it, it grew up. Um, and then he did it with uh, this um it was a healthcare application for hospitals managing blood tests and mm -hmm. results of blood tests. And uh, that, it worked really well in that situation. And now he's uh, working in the automotive industry and, and doing it again in a um, great big microservices um, application for managing so, so, trucks. Yeah. 
So the, so 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 when when I first I I I think I first heard about certainly about the technology I I I kind of come across the idea of kind of snapshotting the results and comparing them by virtue of doing test room development before I suppose but um but the first time I came across uh, I, I I think you were talking about it uh, at a conference that we were both at and your husband was there too and I remember being slightly snippy about it and dismissive because I, I missed the point because I was thinking about something else but I, I think it has an important role could you say where you think it's applicable and where it's not because because I, I I I don't know I don't know whether you agree with me but I think there's places where it's not the right tool and places where it's exactly the right tool yes so I mean I'm still a fan of of TBD and unit testing uh and I would still do that for validating the, the small pieces of, of my software. Um, approval testing more comes into its own when, when this piece of code that you're testing is a little larger, uh, when it has more than one outcome that you want to check. Um, I mean, the, the classic unit test response to, well, it's got more than one icon outcome, so write more tests, just mm -hmm. more tests. Each one tests one thing. But with an approval test, actually, it checks lots of things uh, because the, the diff each line in the diff is like insertion, effectively. So it, you can, it's better when you've got slightly larger pieces. So uh, as part of a test strategy where you've, you've perhaps got unit tests for the, the smallest pieces, you might use approval testing for, for the, those middle layer tests um, where whether you've got bigger chunks that you want to validate together. And then um, even bigger than that, if, I mean, end-to-end -end tests, where you've got the whole system mm -hmm. are notoriously slow and flaky and expensive and often done manually. But I've I've seen very real successes with an a, approval testing approach in that kind of situation, together with a, a few other practices. Um, because the, the challenge there is to make the tests reliable, fast, and cheap to maintain. Yeah. And I, th I think the approval testing piece helps with the cheap to maintain aspect um so i if, if uh so i've had some success with that and um i, I would love to uh, go into more detail but i fear that i might just go off and start ranting <laughs>